Dear esteemed guests and participants, it is my honor to join you today, albeit remotely, and have the opportunity to address such an epical topic, financial impact from physical and transition risks associated with climate change. First, a short introduction. My name is Novera Khan, and I'm currently based in Dusseldorf, Germany, where I have both the privilege and the responsibility to serve as Chief Risk Officer for a global energy firm, Unipa. We generate trade and market energy as well as related services to our wholesale markets and industrial customers. Recently, I've also been part of the advisory board for sustainability and climate risk program that GARP has developed to help bring the risk management discipline forward in the space. I speak to you today from my perspective of the energy industry, which is at the forefront of tackling climate change. It is an exciting, undeniably transformative, and innovative time for our industry, with a collective ambition to extend our technical competence and social conscience, and help pave the way to supplying well-needed, reliably produced energy to our societies in an increasingly decarbonized manner. To this end, our strategy at Unipa has three key interrelated components, decarbonization, customer centricity, and security of supply. Decarbonization sits at the top of our agenda for the power we produce, the services we provide, and the commodities we trade. Like many of our peers, we are working hard to achieve our commitment to carbon neutrality against an aggressive timeline and take this as mission critical. Electricity powers modern societies, lighting, mobile phones, automatic doors, warm showers, many aspects we have come to rely on in our lives. And we all ought to agree that we need energy around the clock. At Uniper, we are proud to not only produce this energy, but do so in a secure, reliable manner and with a great sense of responsibility for the Earth's climate. That is the purpose of the energy transition, and we wholeheartedly not only support but lead the way to a net zero future. Our power stations emit less and less carbon dioxide because our generation fleet is becoming increasingly cleaner. We also have one of Germany's biggest hydroelectric fleets whose output is almost zero carbon. In addition, we are working hard to innovate our way to a low carbon future, such as carbon recycling and power to gas, a technology for storing renewable power as gas. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is a hot topic, not only in our industry, among our policymakers and business people, but also our family members and friends. Fridays for Future and other forms of climate activism show that climate protection has become firmly established in our social conscience, and for good reason. After more than 10,000 years of relative stability, pretty much the full span of human civilization, the Earth's climate is changing. As average temperatures rise, climate science finds that acute hazards such as heat waves and floods grow in frequency and severity, and chronic hazards such as drought and rising sea levels intensify. Organizations like the World Economic Forum have been highlighting for years that the consequence of climate change and environmental degradation have become one of the greatest threats to the global economy and will only materialize to a greater extent in the future. Many of the series of unprecedented extreme weather events witnessed this year alone, sparing no continent, such as the winter storms in Texas, the record heat waves and wildfires in Southern Europe, devastating floods in Germany, and China's Henan province has been affected by severe flooding too. These events are clearly attributable to climate change and have led to considerable human suffering claiming hundreds of lives and destroying thousands of families and their livelihoods, amounting to astronomical financial implications and destruction of critical infrastructure. The bill for our insurance industry related to damage caused by natural disasters in the first half of 2021 is going to be among the largest in a decade. The Henan floods in the middle of this year have led to direct economic losses adding up to about 114 billion yuan that is $18 billion. The floods in Germany will add another 30 to 40 billion USD, just to put 
a few numbers in focus. I think it is safe to say that each such event causes billions of dollars of damage and we have more and more of these events to grapple with. So, what can we do about it? Unfortunately, like most other risks, climate risk can also not be reduced to zero. However, an increasing resilience needs adaptation to climate change, requiring coordinated efforts from the highest levels of government to individual households and firms. For the energy sector, this adaptation means a deep understanding of the nature and extent of the novel physical risks posed by changing climates over the next few decades in order to build resilience into both energy supply system as a whole, as well as facilities, assets, and installations of individual firms. For example, the appropriate weatherization of assets, which was one of the main causes of the Texas energy system failure during the aforementioned winter storms earlier this year. Moreover, we need to adapt the competence and culture within our companies to the practical implications of the transition that we have embarked upon. The speed and urgency of the decarbonization path lends itself to risks and opportunities not only not mastered, but not even fully modeled yet. We are used to knowing and planning and controlling aspects of our business. We need to be mission driven and develop agile ways of coping with many uncertainties in terms of policy, regulation, technology, timing and effectiveness of our response. An industrial landscape that has grown over 250 years in the Western world must be completely transformed in 25 years. Depending on the firm's position in the energy value chain, for example, from wellhead to burner tip, from fuel production to household metering, the financial risk profiles will vary, but the general principles of understanding the nature and extent of the relevant risks and building techniques for resilience remain common. We can start by embracing the risks and opportunities being highlighted by the experts for years now and build on the science-based momentum that requires coordinated response by energy policy and industry participants. It all starts with awareness, identification, modeling and measurement to mitigate the assessed impact and progress from the mitigation of risks, which is a business case in its own right, to perhaps even capitalizing on opportunities that any change including climate change induced energy transition affords us all. However, it is easier said than done. Luckily, many organized responses have already been developed to advance and guide us to a common vocabulary and framework across our industry. No discussion on climate risk can be complete without referring to the task force on climate related financial disclosures called TCFT of the G20 Financial Stability Council's published recommendations from June 2017, this has now become the gold standard for climate reporting. The TST framework strives for climate risk professionals to help their boardrooms and investors alike to quantify the effects of climate change on their business models and to strengthen the resilience of their business strategies. Along its four pillars of governance, strategy, risk management, as well as metrics and targets, companies are working to overcome significant challenges, namely integrating climate change into core elements of the company, such as business strategy, operating model, financial and investment plans, investor relations, requiring close cooperation among several internal and external stakeholders. It is also important to use appropriate scenarios for such an impact assessment. And there are several such climate change based scenarios that one can benchmark against. Moreover, the financial impacts assessed should consider risks and opportunities related to brand, climate litigation, and the much needed access to insurance and capital markets. To this end, governments and supranational organizations have announced action plans to enable the financing of sustainable and carbon-free growth, such as European Union's Action Plan Financing Sustainable Growth EU Taxonomy. For China, Green Bond Endorsed Project Catalog and Green Industry Guiding Catalog. While the green finance enables access to capital to make tangible the urgent headway towards decarbonization targets, the industry also faces major technology and investment risks and opportunities, especially after 2030 
where our mature and early adoption technologies would need to be complemented by scaling up and economizing demonstrated technologies like carbon capture, clean gases, green hydrogen. So, who will pick up the bill? According to a study by McKinsey, reaching net zero only in Europe would require investing an estimated 28 trillion euros in clean technologies and techniques over the next 30 years. If you compare the lost dimensions of the climate-related natural disasters, we are more or less in the same ballpark. Such significant investments will not only require shiploads of money, but also an appropriate policy framework and incentive scheme that enables the companies to run profitable and sustainable business models, as well as to protect the climate. This will allow investors to bear the significant inherent risks of technology, timing, and effectiveness. At Juniper, we lead on many aspects of these decarbonization efforts and have pledged to reach climate neutrality in our European generation business by 2035 and climate neutrality for the whole group by 2050. However, to make sure that climate efforts go in the right direction, we need an appropriate market design and regulatory framework, notably to support the technologies that are required for the energy transition, but not economically viable yet, or maybe too tedious to deploy, such as hydrogen permitting procedures, especially for renewables, transitional role of gas technologies has to be ensured, and finally, the emissions trading scheme strengthened and extended beyond energy industry, perhaps to other sectors like transport and building. In closing, I would like to emphasize that the principles of risk and reward are foundational. However, their use case in the climate risk realm requires significant alignment and coordination. Harnessing of our sensibilities while the speed threatens to take away the basics of financial prudence. We need upskilling of competence and culture, risk and success sharing across industry participants and policymakers. The challenge for us all is one of sustainability, not only to make net zero ambitions possible, but also profitable. It has been my pleasure to reflect on this topic today. I wish all of you a productive rest of the event and look forward to seeing you in person at a future one. Stay safe.